Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's late 2020 and we're doing a modernized video for the MiG-21 Biz Cockpit Familiarization Tutorial. We will split the cockpit into sections to make it manageable. Circling with my mouse here is left wall and console. This is main flight instrument panel, commonly known as dash, front dash. Gun sight. Front bow. You've got obviously control stick and you've got your rudder pedals. Lower auxiliary panel. And right wall and console. Left console starting at the back. We have what looks like two amplifier switches here. One for uh, an M and an L and one for a GS and a KM. They're not operational. You can't click on them and they don't do anything at the moment. There's also a little red knob down here as you can see. That doesn't actually do anything not clickable either. Moving on to things that are clickable. Don't know what that is but that's not clickable. We've got uh, life support. Whether we want our oxygen diluted, so our oxygen dilution switch here, or whether we want 100% oxygen. Next, if our primary O2 system goes down, we've got emergency O2 there. And whether we want our helmet ventilated on or not. So if we want helmet air, con air conditioning on, we can have that off. Next, if we want to drop a deployed drag chute, we can open that up and press that button there. Next, our flaps condition, whether we want them in landing position, fully down. These are blown flaps, by the way, with bleed air from the engine. Takeoff position, roughly about half deployed. And up position, and we can reset the switches here with him. Next, throttle quadrant, obviously throttle for the main engine, can, uh, bound to our uh, HOTAS. Also on that throttle lever is this guy here, uh, uh, similar to the, for instance, Mustang or the F86, and we can twist this grip, which will give us dual function of adjusting the TDC range on the radar if using that, or or and or it can also adjust the PIPA span, so ranging if you like, for the optical gun sight. Here is a push to talk button, so if we want to transmit through our radio, push to talk, and you can see it comes up with these options here. If we want to stow or lock the throttle lever in the off position to turn the engine off, to go to stop basically, you press that lever there. I won't do that now. There is a friction lever down here, but you can't do anything with it because obviously there's no point in simulating that. Next, we've got this guy here. First of all, there's a cover. You must always remember to put this cover up. This button either releases the SPRD ratos, the, uh, the, the boosters that you can use, to do a short takeoff or it can be used to send out countermeasures if you've got your countermeasure pods on. Next, afterburner emergency mode. If we need extra power from the engine for a short amount of time, we can go extra afterburner mode on there. And finally, we've got the hydro boosters for the ailerons are going to give us hydro hydraulic control of the ailerons and that should be on there. Up the sidewall, this here is not functional out of interest, it's a G-Suit Max min valve. This guy here is not functional and we don't know what it's supposed to be, but it doesn't matter. This guy here says engine oxygen feed system, it's a pressure gauge in kilograms per centimeter squared. Out of interest, in the user manual, it says that it is an emergency engine O2 pressure gauge. Next, bus number one circuit breaker here under a cover and it is not clickable we cannot use it so it's not functional next a normal push start button for the engine sorry just a push start button for the engine and here we need to tell it whether it's going to start from cold in which case the engine will start differently because it knows it will change its tolerances and it will it'll work differently for the start or a non cold start there Next, the nose cone, so the you know the, the supersonic nose cone that comes out of the front of the intake, whether we want its position, because it moves forwards and backwards obviously, to be automatically controlled or manually controlled. With the engine compressor anti-surge doors, whether we want them to be automatically controlled and manual or manually controlled. I don't actually know why you'd ever use manual, but uh, I've only ever used auto, but that the, the ability is there. Next, uh, if I jump down here, navigation, whether we want to use uh, RSBN similar to Western TACAN navigation or ARC navigation similar to Western ADF navigation. 
regards our helmet visor whether we want a quick heat there we can heat it up there and again our helmet uh, heat whether we want it to be automatic or whether we want it to be uh, manual next the rsbn control panel if you want to know how to use this properly please go and watch the rsbn uh, navigation video in our tutorial but just to go over it volume for our audio morse code identifier which i think you can actually hear now in the background next regards azimuth and distance um, whether we are picking up that signal and can achieve the correction next again azimuth and distance uh, correction switches again please don't watch our video to understand how this actually works we've got our channel selector for main normal navigation and we've got our PRMG I think it's called the equivalent of a uh, Western ILS system you can choose a channel there and uh, we can zero the azimuth there and that's that panel done moving up the wall we have the seat whether we want it electrically moved up or down does not work for some reason another one that does not work is this one suit ventilation does not move and does not work this one here is the engine uh, nozzle 2 position emergency control so we can lock it down which is open in the afterburner position or we can have it in uh, in the uh, military power condition next air conditioning whether we want it off which is in its middle position or cold or uh, it's a bit difficult to work this switch there we go automatic or warm or back to off next we've got the SPS uh, main energizer off or on the SPS 141 is the jamming system of this aircraft next this is regards a piece of equipment on this aircraft known as the SOD 57 it's the aircraft distance transponder it's something you're going to be using to communicate with the tower and this is the identification button so the tower is asking you to essentially squawk to them your identity then you can press that to to send that information next we have the ARU 3VM uh, basic flight augmentation system it is going to change how our flight stick is linked to the rear uh, elevators in terms of how much control we get we can have it automatic or we can have it manual and when manual we can change uh, low speed neutral or high speed it's going to show based on our speed how much control we have of the of the elevators basically next the missile growl tone the volume of it audible here and finally we have a drag shoot uh, deploying button here for landing using the drag shoot next we have a bit uh, or a tester for the rsbn system this was interesting abs off and on we think that that is going to be the equivalent of anti-lock brakes or you know anti-skid on a russian plane on this plane it's called auto gear brake so we've had to make that assumption next is do you want to allow the afterburner which is in the up position or do you want to set the regime to maximize at military power in the down position next we've got our emergency air start button we've got a video showing how to use that uh, emergency air start in various regimes next we've got the engine apu which is going to be left on on this aircraft and we've got the energizer for the engine fire extinguisher again it's going to be left on on this aircraft moving forward canopy lock and unlock and canopy pressurize gear handle up for the up position down in the neutral non-pressurized position and down in the down position and we have a lock here uh, and when that lock is down it will stop the uh, gear from being able to uh, move be retracted which is something to always look out for and should be on your pre-flight list next landing lights whether we want them landing lights taxi lights or off next our oxygen supply pressure in kilograms per centimeter squared next our engine fire extinguisher cover and the actual button to fire the extinguisher needs to be energized there next our cabin pressure equivalent in kilometers so zero here obviously and that is 20 kilometers next our surface or element indication panel so left gear right gear nose gear showing that they are down and locked if they're green uh, if they are up then they're red here flaps out indicator air breakout indicator and gear down warning indicator here this will show when our flaps are down but our gear is not reminding us to land our gear uh, lower our gear and a rear stat that we can turn here for the brightness uh, of the dials next autopilot 
primary panel. So this guy here is an indicator. It will show when our level mode is on, keeping our keeping our aircraft level. Next is our low altitude limit. When we have this guy turned on, it is our automatic uh, low altitude recovery system, uh, which will be will work with the radio altimeter here and. Uh, to stop you going too low basically uh, within certain restrictions anyway we've got a proper video on the autopilot and how to use it explaining exactly what they do next automatic stabilization on here we can click that by pressing that on there next autopilot for automatic landing which has, this aircraft can do we've got a video showing how to do that the automatic mode there and we've got the uh, azimuth or the direction mode on there and if we want to alleviate or remove these we can use the off button here to remove that to the front dash top left sub armament panel so first gun ready will show green light here uh, and if we want to reload the gun to arm the gun we have small pyro charges we can use we have three charges we can press charge one two and three our gun is armed next master mode air to air air to ground missile mode or air to air missile mode uh, infrared neutral neither or uh, semi-active radar homing, so radar guided missiles. Which pylon we're going to use? So we've got infrared and radar guided here. Um, we've got obviously four pylons uh, to use on this aircraft. The S24 large rockets, different pylons that we can use. And small diameter rocket pods or bombs. Uh, we can choose the pylons there. Next here relating to the position of our nose cone our intake nose cone in percent here and the ability to manually control it or manually set it there cockpit anti-ice button next is a display for our ARU 3VM this is our flight augmentation system for the elevator uh, I'm going to struggle with that anything can you explain that RC it does work as a long arm or a short arm between your stick and your elevators so it gives you more or less deflection depending on how you choose to um, set it or it can just be uh, automatic next nose gear brake as most russian planes of the time on or off and rsbn master navigation control proceed nav and landing mode uh, we'll switch through them as we go through and working our way to PRMG and I've got a full RSBM PRMG video if you want to go and see the proper description of that. Down starting from the left here a red warning light for danger low altitude from our radar altimeter. Next is our emergency wheel brake. Next is our uh, RATO uh, SPRD alternate firing switch there are two ways of firing the, the radios in this but we can uncover that and press that if we want next we can select between our inner and outer ndb markers for uh, a runway approach outer and then to inner next this green light that will show is regards our arc system our arc to landing ndb frequency self adjusting adjustment indicator light quoting the manual there Next, SORC. This is essentially our master uh, caution light, and we have the ability to cancel there. Next, drop our wing tanks, open up the cover, and do thus. Next, we have our NPP adjustments. NPP, so this is regards our uh, navigation and HSI, and we have the ability to correct. Uh, to magnetic we, we think it's a while since we've studied proper navigation this but we think this will readjust the gyro slave it to the magnetic compass we stand to be corrected on that over to flight instruments we have our airspeed indicator here in hundreds of kilometers per hour next our barometric altimeter uh, we have a long needle for hundreds of meters 300 meters 400 and thousands of meters with the small needle here or you could say kilometers i suppose and then continues on kilometers on the inside here up to 30,000 kilometers 90,000 feet or so we could also set the barometric pressure with a knob that's cunningly hidden underneath this gear switch oh there it is look and we can change it in tens of units here now those units it doesn't say in the manual we think they are millibars metric please let us know if we've got that wrong but we think that's what it is uh put that back up uh, next radar altimeter that is measured in meters and not much else to say on that next adi 
Attitude Director Indicator, commonly known as an artificial horizon. Dual purpose, it is an ADI and it is also navigation for RSBN PRMG. Again, if you want to know about it fully, please go and watch our navigation tutorials. But otherwise, we can show uh, our aircraft is here. The horizon line is there, 10 degrees up pitch, 20 degrees up pitch and down. Roll indicator, right um, degrees down to 90 here, uh, zero there, left down to 90 there. Also offset indicators for navigation there and there. We can cage it with the arrest button here and uncage. We have a traditional manual yaw slip indicator here. I'm going to keep this guy between the two gates wherever possible. We also have a KPP set. Now traditionally, in, certainly in a western plane, this guy would be used to trim the pitch of this, uh, this instrument, uh, to trim the horizon line. Doesn't seem to work. Let us know if you think we're missing something, but we think that's what it should do. Next, our HSI horizontal situation indicator, primary method of navigation, multi-purpose again. Again, please, you know, this is a complicated thing to use, so please go and watch the navigation tutorial. But what we do have is obviously compass rows around the outside, doubles up as a radio compass needle. We've also got the ability to set course here. We've also got symbology for PRMG guidance in the middle there with associated flags. And I think that's as far as we'll go into it uh, today with the HSI. Moving down, we have, regards the link between our radar and our semi-active radar homing missiles, do we want the frequency selector mode in, if I can get it to work, uh, one, which is actual live fire, or two, training mode. Next, this is magnetic uh, reset. We think this is a degausser, basically, for the radar. However, personally, we've never got it to work. Again, we stand to be corrected, never used it properly in anger, that one. Next, just to backtrack slightly, we've had confirmed that the barometric indicator here is in millimetres of mercury times 10. That's what our, we're going to be measuring there. Next is variometer. Uh, it's going to be three gauges in one, essentially. We've got our VSI, vertical speed indicator. We are climbing or we are descending at this amount of metres per second. We have a trim gauge for it as well. There, or a setter. We have a turn indicator here, left and right, and we have our backup your slip indicator here. Next, we have an interesting gauge. Uh, we have two elements of this gauge, a thick needle and a thin needle. The thick needle is showing our MAC up to MAC 3, and our thinner needle is showing thousands of kilometers an hour, but true airspeed. So remember, indicated airspeed uh, times 100, and true airspeed times a thousand. Next, we have our chronometer slash aviation uh, clock here with, uh, with functions knob left and right, pushable and or settable, pushable and or settable. Next, we have our system voltage meter shown in tens of volts up to 30 volts. Moving down, control stick and rudder, obviously rudder, like thus you don't have tow brakes in these aircraft you have the uh, uh, you know the pneumatic brake lever there stick with pushable controls with a mouse if you want you've got trim up and trim down in terms of pitch you've got a correction to make um, from last time is that we have the autopilot recovery button there turn our recovery off cancel it there so if we turn it on uh, autopilot uh, there recovery like there and again cancel it ping there a target lock button there uh, we have weapon release button cover and weapon release button ping put that back that's the stick let's move it to uh, out the way to get to the lower auxiliary panel so top left under the cover we have an emergency well it says here missile rocket launcher according to the manual it's actually an air-to-air -air auxiliary launcher another way of launching the air-to-air -air missiles uh, next We've got here what it's known as a tactical drop cover. What it actually means is bombs armed, and when they're armed, the red light is on, and not armed or safe like that. Next, our primary electric heater for the pedo tube, periscope, and for the clock, and an emergency or secondary heater for the uh, pedo there. Next, we have oil pressure gauge in kilometers, uh, kilometers, 
kilograms per centimeter squared. Next, we have the settable warning limit for the radar altimeter in meters. So if we want the radar altimeter warning, you remember a little red light that shows at the kind of top left there, to go off when we are below 200 meters, then that's we can set it there or we can turn it off if we're annoyed by that warning and we're going very low. Next, our cabin pressure and altitude meter here. This is showing essentially the difference between the cabin pressure and the outside air pressure at your altitude. Next, pressure of left and right main wheel brakes. And I can probably give you an example there. There you go. Next, battery capacity meter here, and that is measured in amps. Now, it doesn't show here times 10, but we get the feeling that is probably times 10 because 4 amps is combined with the voltage we've got is almost no power so we're going to make the assumption that it's times 10 amps but it doesn't say that in the manual. Next our armament or stores indicator currently showing that UB pods these are our rocket pods one two three and four are all empty well I don't actually have them on uh, I can also change that there and test those lights whoops let's try that again there and you can see if if certain pylons are occupied pylon one occupied uh, three outer, four outer, two inner, whether the JATO left and right are occupied, whether the centerline fuel tanks are occupied and whether fuel pods are empty. Again, a uh, rheostat here for uh, night and day mode. Next, right main dash. Exterior or external stores, jettison, outboard pylons, inboard pylons. Next, hydraulic pressure in hundreds of kilograms per square centimetre our command line and our main line. Next, fuel quantity times 1,000 litres, so just under 3,000 litres at the moment, and manual adjuster there, or manual reset. This is engine exhaust temperature gauge in hundreds of degrees Celsius, up to just under 900 degrees. Next, engine tachometer in RPM in percent rather than actual RPM, if you know what I mean. Uh, we've got two needles here. Stage one, compressor. Stage two, compressor. Next, we've got a, I'm not sure the technical name for this, but a distance meter to our selected navigation point of interest in kilometers, in hundreds, tens, and units of kilometers. Oil low pressure warning light, red. Control warning indicators, according to the manual, we have our neutral trim here, so we're trimmed neutral for takeoff. Stabilizer on, we haven't managed to work out what this means, it doesn't say anything about it in the manual and we can't actually get how, work out how to turn it on and off, so you'll have to help us with that one. Uh, our inlet cone, if it's out here, and our, put in this one as well, in the red one is our runway inner slash outer marker or beacon. Basically, this guy is going to show when we're going over an inner or an outer beacon slash marker. This guy here is our gyro reset indication light. This is for the SAU, the autopilot, the MPP, the HSI and the radar gyros. Next is our radar scope. There is symbology on it when it's turned on, obviously. Please watch the radar tutorial for that, Ed Air radar tutorial. Regards radar controls, eight buttons here. RC, can you do these? You have your uh, jammer filter button, the first one that's continuous. Your next one is your intermittent jammer radar filter. Yep. Next one is your passive radar filter. Yep. Uh, after that is your weather filter for the radar. Oh, no. Then you have your IFF button on the lower left to IFF your targets. After that, you have your low speed filter button. Yep. Then your self test and a reset to reset all the other buttons. Lovely. For a proper description of when you use these and what these actually do, please watch the radar tutorial. Thank you. Top right dash, RWR, radar warning receiver. We've got a small video if you want to go and see the function of this and we can test it. Works visual and audio cues. Interestingly, when you press it, <laughs> the angle of attack changes. But okay. Uh, RWR volume, so you know the volume of this. Uh, next, ATC, uh, so regards our SOD57 system, which is the ability to communicate with the tower that we looked at earlier. This is what we call an emissions light, 
uh, now we think what that is is when the tower is transmitting to us that is going to show however as far as I'm aware we can't actually use the system at the moment so we stand to be corrected there pedo tube selection standby or main pedo tube aircraft's angle of attack in degrees up to about 40 in which case you would just stall and fall out of the sky or down to minus 10 and that won't do the engine very good either next acceler accelerometer uh, up to plus 10 g's and negative 5 g's with historical needles next weapon readiness indicator lights and i'll let rc describe these so the top light is the r-2 us air to air radar missile lock light for the left wing pylon the middle light is the same but on the right wing pylon only and the bottom one is the R-60 air-to-air IR missile lock light independent of pylon location. So gun sights, uh, if we start over here, launch indicator. So if we have a lock, a radar lock on a target and we are within suggested range to launch the missile, this will show, showing that we can launch the missile. This guy here, if we have a radar lock on a target, is the distance of the target from us in kilometers. This is, if you like, a master mode, allowing to switch between GN, that's gun and rocket, or LNC launch, which is uh, missiles. Next, do we want to shoot something with rockets or guns, or do we want to be bomb something with bombs? Next, master mode of using the PIPA, here, or the ranging system, automatic. This means it's controlled by the ranging is controlled by the radar. Manual means that we can control the ranging. For instance, if we were on manual, we then get control of the wingspan indicator, which is the inner scale. If I show you, if I adjust it with this here, you see that guy getting bigger? The inside is going to be our wingspan of our suggested aircraft in meters. The meters are shown here, you know, 32 meters wingspan, otherwise known as milliradians. Milliradians will work with meters in this case, and we can show the milliradians there. Associated with that is can be our depression. With the manual mode, we have a depressible pipper, and we can depress in milliradians angle there, or suggested weapons there. Next is our gyro working mode. Whether our gyro is engaged, um, or whether our gyro is disengaged and we're in manual fixed mode, uh, known as missile. Main backlight. We've got the brightness here of the static symbology. You see there, turn the static symbology on and off. Uh, the PIPA, which is this guy here, gyro or non-gyro driven, we can turn that on and off. The brightness of the PIPA there. Moving up here, regards a radar lock, we have a radar lock on something, all this can be used to air to ground actually. Uh, breakaway lights, this will show red if you are too close to a target and are being told to break away. Really useful, for instance, if you're shooting bombers down in IFR conditions, then you know that's going to be required. If you do achieve a radar lock, then a radar lock light will show there. Uh, regards these four gauges here, from top to bottom, my best let RC explain these. Top scale is your diameter of your pipper, which you'll be able to adjust depending on what mode you're in. The next scale down is your air-to-air -air gun distance scale from 2,000, 400 to 2,000 meters. Your next scale down is your air-to-air -air missile distance scale from 1 to 9 kilometers. And the last one is your air-to-air -air ground rocket and guns distance scale 400 to 2,000 meters. And left and right we have stool warning indicators. We're also being told by our American viewers that milliradians here, one milliradian is equal to one meter at 1,000 meters range. That's apparently the relationship between that. Right panel, right wall. We've got harness uh, looseness not modeled. We've got harness separation not modeled. That's, you know, physical off light harness. We've got the copy ventilation on and off there. And we've got, moving back here, uh, the air bleed doors, a Mach 1.5 test here. Ping. We've got, regards the SOD 5.7 system we're talking about many times now, we've got a tester, left tester and a right tester, we're pretty sure they're not modelled. Next, rheostat for the text lights, you may or may not be able to see the difference that's making in the day. Just, just see a little bit of difference. And instruments, backlights for the instruments, rheostat lights again, you can see that a lot easier. 
Uh, BU-45, this is for the aileron booster system, BU-45, and this is a disengage switch for the aileron hydraulic booster system. On to switches, lots and lots of switches. So, the Rato system, uh, you know, the rocket system to get us airborne, uh, on and off. The drop system, so you can drop it like thus. We've got the AC generator on and off, the DC generator on and off. On is the forward position, by the way. Battery on and off, the backup uh, inverter here, electric inverter, currently off. With two switches here that allow us to energize gyros for various systems, and you can see which systems they are if you hover over them. Next, fuel pumps. Third group fuel pump, first group fuel pump, and this one says drain fuel tank pump. According to the manual, this is the dispense fuel pump, so we're going to assume that that is for the exterior tanks. We can't find any other information on that. Next, primary and auxiliary pneumatic system pressure, kilograms per centimetre squared, going to be used, for instance, for the wheel brakes. Finally, a rheostat for uh, main red lights here that we're not going to be able to see very well. Next, caution slash indicator panels. A lower one down here, we can press. This one actually lights up all of the uh, lamp, lamp test in the cockpit. I'm don't, not going to explain every single one. It's quite obvious what they are. I know the red ones are quite hard to read at the moment, but you can see them in there. Also, they are rear stats so that we can turn up and down the brightness. And this one will just isolate the lamp test for this uh, warning panel here. Next, another radar control panel. Whether radar is off, energized or operational and we've got an, the radar error lights there showing red we've got our uh, low altitude uh, light here with reference to this switch here and i probably best pass this one to rc the altitude uh, filter light uh, sorry, so if switch. you're lowing oh if you're flying at low altitude and you get interference from your radar and you can't gain altitude uh, the middle position will kind of erase the left the lower lobes of your radar to try and get rid of the uh, artifact and if you switch it to the top position it will tilt your radar up 1.5 degrees to try and get the ground clutter copy this up. Is, yeah this is not a modern look down radar uh, next regards air to ground attack with beam riding missiles aka grom or beam uh, radar beam guided missiles we've got locked beam indicator like there and we can lock the beam like thus Next, regards our SOD57 ident that we were talking about several times now, our, uh, our mode, if you like, we find course, off, signal, or group. We had the uh, identify button over on the left wall, right over here we have the interrogate button for the SOD57 uh, system. Arc master volume, this is the radio navigation system you can actually hear the difference that it makes there next again regards the SOD57 SOD system whether it's just on or off uh, regard its channels 1, 2 or 3 IFF system type 81 on or off RWR on RWR off our arc system again whether we want it in uh, compass or antenna mode down to the arc system main master panel itself, a channel, preset channels, you can see the channel number there, whether we're going to squelch the signal or not, do we want it in radio mode or compass mode, it's going to be in compass most of the time, and volume for the, uh, uh, for the identifier, and if we go to the left we have additional preset channels for known NDBs, uh, set presumably by the ground crew, and this guy up here, non-functional. Next, main power off or on switches for various systems. We've got the nose cone system here. We've got the emergency hydraulic pump here on or off. We've got the trim uh, trimmer system. We've got uh, the radio system on or off. We've got the arc navigation system. We've got the radio altimeter, the RSBN navigation system. We've got the KPP main and emergency gyro system here. We've got the NPP on or off. We've got the SAU, uh, the systems that we've looked at before, obviously. We've got the SAU pitch. We've got the missile or rocket uh, heater on or off. We've got the 
missile rocket launch on or off we've got pylons one and two power off pylons three and four power on or off navigation lights uh, in here normal bright or dim or off in the middle flight recorder there not modeled in dcs we've got gun power there we've got the sight power for asp gun sight we've got the uh, gun cam not modeled we've got the iff uh, decoder there pretty sure that's not modeled oh uh, what are the lights the top one is your iff control emitter on the bot the middle one is your iff control light illuminated means your code is on and your bottom one is your iff control light illuminated means your decipher is on Next, the IFF channel selector or code selector, not functional as far as we're aware. Again, with regards to this IFF system, self-destruct or zero rise button, as far as I'm aware, not actually modeled. Uh, same thing is going to be here. The emergency transmitter, as far as I'm aware, is not actually going to be modeled, at least at the moment. Next, regard the ARC radio navigation system, uh, we've got to tell the aircraft in which sectors we are uh, we are operating, which, which ranges we're going to be using. And rather than explaining that, please watch our ARC tutorial for that and back we go a whole load of circuit breakers slash on and off switches nothing here is modeled apart from these three here so you've got inverter uh, sorry uh, yes inverter one inverter two and your battery heater lots of heaters in this aircraft i've noticed uh, on or off and that's all we've got there back up to the top of the sidewall emergency gear release here we've got our main white lights here We're not going to see them i suppose in the day and a cannabis jettison here and at the top we've got a rear facing mirror there which i find completely useless because you have to look up but that's that and i think that is everything anything you think we've missed rc no i hope that was useful and see you later